Today on CityCast Boise, we're speaking with two friends who connected when they realized they both had a common vision to open a coffee shop that could also serve as a much-needed community space on the West Bench. We'll learn what it took to get that dream off the ground and how the neighborhood has responded. It's Monday, September 30th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. Today, I'm chatting with the owners of Common Ground Coffee and Market on the West Bench, Sarah Keck and Lori Pierman. Thank you both for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, Lori, I want to I want to start with you, and I want to talk about your business's name, Common Ground. It's a great pun. I love a good pun, um, but I'm guessing the name has more intentionality behind it. What was the inspiration for naming your business Common Ground? Uh, well, Sarah and I threw out a lot of ideas initially, and this one just kind of stuck with us. Uh, it has kind of, I think, a few different meanings, but the one, the primary one is really on the nose. It really is just that we wanted to create a space in the neighborhood for West Boise, the West Bench, Winstead Park neighborhoods to create a, kind of an extension of of people's li- living rooms and create a space for people to gather a true common ground where everyone could feel welcome. But also, Sarah and I have kind of a unique parallel history where we were born in the same small town in Southern California, moved to Caldwell, Idaho in the early 90s, and have kind of tracked the same ground over those years. So even we have sort of a shared common ground. So, And Sarah, what's your vision for common ground? Our vision for the coffee shop was really um, kind of like a field of dreams thing. Like uh, our community is full of diverse and really you know, a cool demographic of people. And we notice a lot of people like to hang out, but usually at each other's houses because there's just nowhere to go to gather. So um, the West Bench and Winstead Park neighborhoods have a really, really neat identity and a really cool history, but not anywhere to kind of put that energy collectively. Um, So a gathering space for the community to kind of... uh, establish and revitalize itself and just, you know, be together. How did you end up meeting up and then deciding to open a coffee shop? Yeah. So we met at a friend's house um, doing like a 5K little, you know, run sometime close to Thanksgiving, aka a turkey trot. Um, And we, I, I was actually talking to Lori's husband, Nick, And mentioned that this was, you know, a a vision of mine for the neighborhood and for myself, you know, to start a coffee shop and the specific building that I had my eye on. And he kind of was like, "Um, you need to talk to my wife right now and dragged Lori over and was like, hey, Sarah, meet Lori, Lori, meet Sarah. We started talking about, you know, what we wanted to do with our lives, our dream of opening a coffee shop in our neighborhood. And it was so parallel that it was it's eerie and then we started kind of getting to know each other and uncovering our pasts and found out all these really synchronous things about each other and our lives and Lori always calls it like an instant classic friendship and it really is like an instant classic we work really well together as you know business partners as friends and it feels very holistic to be in business with each other for, you know, all these commonalities and and such a shared vision for what we want for our our community and our future. And Lori, I'll, I'll throw this one to you. There's there's a really common saying, like, don't get in business with friends, um, but you guys are clearly friends. It, has that made the process easier or maybe added different layers of challenges? I think it's different for us because we met with this shared vision out of the gate. We really formed a friendship with the goal that we had in mind to bring the neighborhood together and to pursue dreams that we had that happened to sync up so nicely. So the friendship was kind of secondary and is formed as a result of our drive and our just sort of this magical experience that we've had together of being able to connect with so many people in our direct neighborhood Uh, bigger Boise, bigger Treasure Valley, and just continuing to have so much positivity in our lives. I I feel like it's, we have a lot going on as it is. We have children and full lives. So to do this with a partner who I really truly enjoy and have, we have a very odd sense of humor that matches up very nicely. So we can just have so much fun 
doing hard things, which makes hard things wonderful. Now, you both chose a pretty, what used to be a pretty rundown building that needed extensive renovations on the West Bench as a location for your coffee shop. And I I think that could have been really intimidating for a lot of people, which is probably why it was vacant for like six years. Why did you want that location specifically? And more generally, why did you want to be on the West Bench on Ustick? Well, um, to see our community as what it is and and the you know the people the people are vibrant they're wonderful they want to be together and uh and then to look at these run down decrepit buildings that no one is investing any time in in our immediate community was quite frankly absolutely maddening that people were you know letting these places rot instead of using them to their full potential And so that was really great fuel for us to do those extensive renovations and to be motivated to really zero in on that spot. On Instagram, y'all have described your shop as being in the Wild West bench. What does that mean? You know, I think um, Lori and I both coming from Caldwell and the 2C region um, and also further back from Bakersfield, we kind of mustered up all of that. I would say it's a little bit, mm, I want to be careful with my words, but it's a little more gritty, you know, these places than Boise is. Mm-hmm. And we brought that grit with us. And um, so it's personified kind of in the the cowboy Wild West culture. And uh, the inhabitants here already are, you know, they can be a wild bunch. I mean, the coffee shop gets loud and and we love it. And we want to we want to embrace that, that wildness rowdiness, the loudness, the fun, the vibrancy. And and with that that fun and vibrancy and grit, how receptive has the neighborhood been to your shop? Oh my gosh. From the very beginning, people have expressed so much excitement that someone was investing in a building and revitalizing it. When we first started doing construction, we just kind of left. I mean, the entire front of the building was gone. So people could just walk up and chat with us. Uh, Sarah and I did as much as we could in the shop ourselves. And we had lots of friends and family, people, connections in the valley helping us with construction. So we were there a lot. In February and March, it was freezing cold and people would stop by with their dogs on walks or pull up in their car and ask what was happening. So from the very beginning, there's just been a lot of really positive reinforcement and people giving us thumbs up as they go by, clapping, you know, (laughs) wanting a part of it, wanting to get involved too, asking how they can support and help And that really hasn't stopped. We're three and a half, almost four months in, and we still have people offering to, you know, help us with small projects, bring in items to share in the shop, get involved with events, just participate in whatever way possible, which is really what we wanted. So that's been validating, but also it has just given the shop a life of its own that was also what we wanted. So that maybe that's an edge of the wild, too, is that we don't actually know where it's going to go. We want it to reflect the community around it and just kind of be a, a hot spot for whatever whatever the community brings to the table. And you also have a small market in your coffee shop. What kind of things do you carry? And has that been a draw for the community or the neighborhood also? Yeah, Lori is the market master. She does a lot of the, you know, hunting down items for the market. We really wanted that to reflect our values also and have local goods for sale that are, you know, right here in our neighborhood. So people don't have to drive all the way downtown or towards Fairview to get these local goods. We have stuff for kids, stuff for dogs, things that you can pick up on the way home that you need in your house, like milk, bread, you know, things like that. Um, And we want to continue to grow this area too, art and um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. I also see it as an opportunity to kind of highlight other businesses that are just starting out. We're so new and we've had such a boost from those established businesses around us. Um, Cafe Mule, Earth Beverage Company. There have been so many people we've worked with. uh, Lots of people that have really leaned in to help us make this a reality and as quickly as it has. So I think having a space in our shop to then highlight other up and coming businesses or folks that are following their dreams is a really cool Cool way to foster more community in the Valley. 
We've talked a lot about third spaces in other CityCast episodes and have really come to the conclusion that Boise doesn't have a lot of places where people can gather and hang out with friends or get work done cheaply or for free. And this lack of third spaces can lead to community members feeling really isolated. It seems like you're interested in addressing that issue with your business. So what are some of the ways that you've worked to make Common Ground really accessible for the community? The, the easiest one for me, at least, out of the gate, is I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. Sarah also has kids. They're older. But we've been moms very recently in the age group that's kind of tough to take kids out in public. <laughs> so one way I think that was really great to create more of this extension of a living room feel, really be welcoming, is to create a small section of the shop that kids can play in. So we have kids' books, toys, a soft chair, a rug, um, just a space where kids can feel welcome which in turn makes parents feel welcome and those that are nearby. So I think that's been a big piece of of creating a third space is thinking about all age groups, but also just being receptive to what people bring to us in terms of what they want to see in the shop. I think that's a really big part of a third space is making people feel like they're part of it. So one example is Bruce and Cheryl live in our neighborhood and they approached us and asked if we wanted to have a piano in the shop a few weeks back which had actually been on like our vision board (laughs) in the planning process was like, wouldn't a piano bring people together and be fun and different? And then as, as the project went along, we were like, we, do we have space for a piano? What would the reality of that really be? People slamming on keys. This might be terrible. So it didn't happen. But when they approached us about it, it was kind of like, oh, of course. Perfect. Absolutely. And what a generous gift. They had it moved in. And I think adding layers like that that aren't just about our vision is really what makes it a welcoming space and and creates kind of that extension of, of people's lives that becomes that third space. When people enter your coffee shop, they're going to see that you have this large American flag on the wall. And that's that's not necessarily something that people commonly see on the West Bench. And the American flag has definitely developed certain connotations. So why did you choose to have that as such a prominent fixture in your decor? So the flag is a gift from the Veterans Cemetery um, in Boise, and it was for my father's dedication. Um, My dad passed away in October 2022. And not only was he a very generous person, very kind, very passive, sweet man um, who post the war in Vietnam, but fought there anyway, because he was drafted when he was 18. But um, he had swirled away quite a bit of money that my brothers and I didn't know about. And so we each had an inheritance when he passed away. And that is one of the only reasons that it's possible for, you know, me to have this dream. And it's kind of, you know, telling of like the American dream and, uh, you know, kind of an ode to my dad and a way that he can kind of be in the shop with us. And um, we also don't believe that the flag should be representative of any one group of Americans. It should be for everyone. No, I love that. I love that idea that, you know, we're all Americans. I think that really fits well with your theme of common ground, that that the neighborhood is coming together. We're all Americans. We, all, we just want some coffee. We want to hang together, you know, have this community space. I think that's really great. Yeah. Thank you. One thing that's really unique about your shop is that you offer activities I've never seen in a coffee shop, like trivia and bingo and a silent book club. What was the inspiration behind facilitating all of these activities in addition to making coffee and running a market? It's really just an extension of our community-centric um, you know, purpose that we want to be a gathering space. So it was what sounded like fun to us. It was uh, some ideas that folks threw out um, who wanted to be involved with these things. They were like, you know, what if we what if we collaborate? What if we host this in the shop? The shop is a physical space that should, you know, be used. So if there are ways that we can facilitate more fun community events we want to. And we're open to other, you know, fun ideas. And you've been open for a little while, but you're having your official grand opening on October 5th. What do you have planned for that day? And, you know, what what time, what should people expect or what can they look forward to? 
Well, we have uh, Mayor McLean coming to cut a ribbon with us actually at 9 a.m. So that's kind of going to kick things off. But I think we'll open at our normal time of 8 a.m. Um, we've got live music. We've got food trucks. We've got arts and crafts of all kinds and lots of local vendors throwing us cool ideas like Wana Matcha Tea, Earth Beverage. Um, all the people from Cafe Mule will be there. Uh, lots of local vendors that we sell the shop will attend. Um, yeah. So kind of an all day get together. We're thinking from 9 a.m. to somewhere around 6.30 p.m. All right. If you need your afternoon coffee pickup, you can still get it at Common Ground. Okay, I saved the hardest and maybe most controversial question for last. Um, what is each of your favorite drink that you're serving right now? I am so glad that you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite drink that we're serving right now is a maple matcha. It's a matcha tea latte made with wana matcha tea and pure maple syrup. That sounds delicious. What about you, Lori? What's your favorite beverage you're serving? Well, my favorite be beverage is boring, so I'm not going to tell you what I go to day in, day out. But I think favorite on our menu right now, it's got to be the Salty Gal, which we have one house-made salted caramel sauce that we do. It's our it's our one house-made kind of core menu item for our drinks. And uh, the recipe came from someone in our neighborhood, actually. So it was the perfect, you know, evolution to serve it in the shop. And it's sweet and creamy and it's really fun to make it and then yell out Salty Gal. Uh, when you pass it across the counter. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound really fun. Well, I think both of those sound delicious. We're going to have links in the show notes to your grand opening um, and where people can find out more information about that. Thank you both for joining me and, you know, explaining your vision and your dedication to your community with your business. This this has been really fun. Yeah. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. Thanks, Lindsay. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. You know, if you enjoyed the show, you should check out our Hey Boise newsletter. And we'll be back tomorrow morning with our guide to October in Boise. You won't want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs>